Hey, how man. are you guys doing today? Good. How are you? I love that shirt. I, thank you. I figured I'd be like in the vibe of the show. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, man. Very You're good. cheering me up. That's it. <laughs> Uh, Michael, first to you. Nobody in this world plays a law enforcement officer better than you. But oh, tell me what was different for preparing for Agent Zillow different from this era to maybe some previous roles. Hey, man. How are you guys doing today? Good. How are you? I love that shirt. I, thank you. I figured I'd be like in the vibe of the show. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, man. Very You're good. cheering me up. That's it. <laughs> Uh, Michael, first to you. Nobody in this world plays a law enforcement officer better than you. Oh, but dude, tell me you. what was different for preparing for Agent Zillow different from this era to maybe some previous roles. I get this question a lot. Uh, you know, I guess, look, I've been very, very fortunate to be able to play guys like Vic Mackey and Tony Scali and the commission. Uh, they've all been very distinct, I feel. And this one was distinct as well. Uh, beginning with the period... You know, this is a very, very, you know, it's 1978, the advent of the cocaine trade in Miami. Very, very distinct time um, and distinct issues that he's dealing with. You know, he's from Brooklyn originally. Mackie was from Boston. You know, uh, you, there's a whole bunch of different differences between these two men. And, the, and, and it satisfied me in that, you know, I could live in this character in, in, in a completely different way than I have with the, any of the others. Now to the audience, you know, they'll, they'll see some crossover that will probably be a good thing for them. You know, uh, you know, if they, if they enjoy any of my portrayals of law enforcement in the past, they, they might, pardon my language, fucking dig this, but, <laughs> uh, but, um, but you know, he's not Vic Mackey. He's Dominic Zulio. He's just a different guy. And I just want to share Chris Brancato told me behind the scenes that, that this, in the hands of some other actor, this could have been just that DEA agent who forces Danny Pino to go down a different path. But in the hands of Michael Chiklis, it becomes so deep and dimensional and vulnerable and in and well, we discussed all of that. And, Thank you, Mark. and it's uh, it, and you want to talk about depth and dimension and everything? Let's talk about his character that, because that's exactly what I was about to say. I was like, that's the perfect segue. Right? Incredible, perfect... incredible. Want to talk about depth and dimension and everything? Let's talk about his character that, because that's exactly what I was about to say. I was like, that's incredible. the perfect segue. Incredible, <laughs> incredible. I, you know, honestly, I can't think of a of a comparable character that I've seen ever to to Mark's portrayal in this. It really is someone that is as broad and over the top, but at the same time grounded and nuanced and vulnerable and and intelligent and uh, uh, this wildly uh, like naive yet. Uh, like I, I don't even know how to describe his character. It's all of these different things. Thank you so much. Uh, and man, you know, listen, I I am a musician as well as an actor, and I I always hear the music in in anything that I'm in and anything that I read. And this guy's hitting a million notes, and that's Thank some you. virtuosity. It's true. Thank you, buddy. So. I mean, yeah, yeah exactly. I agree 100%. And, and I guess a good question to follow up with that, Burton comes across so many historical figures throughout the series. Who's someone from that era that maybe you would have been fun to interact with as Burton? Oh, my God. Uh, what a great question. A great that question. is so much fun. And um, I got to tell you, to get into character, I was I was reading all the beat poets. So I would have been in heaven to meet the real Hunter S. Thompson, to meet Jack Kerouac, to meet Allen Ginsberg, Abby Hoffman, to meet Alan Watts and sit and meditate with him as my character might have done. Um, it's, and that's the fun of historical fiction, which Chris Brancato has been an enormous contributor to as a genre from Narcos to Godfather of Harlem, where uh, Bumpy Johnson's getting to have a scene with Muhammad Ali. Who knows if they ever really said those things, but you don't care because you're on the ride. And my character gets to interact with Hunter S. Thompson and Rick James and the Maharishi. So it's like the most fun because we know they probably never. I mean, we, we know that the song that Rick James made famous was probably not based on Burton Greenberg. But in our world, it is. Cause I'm a super freak, super freak. He's super freak, eh? Ow. Yeah. <laughs>
Thank you. Guys, thank you. That was a joy, a pleasure. <laughs> thank you guys so much. Have a great rest of your day. You made my job easy. Thank you guys. Thanks, thank man. Thank you. Thank you.